Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and welcome back to Total Tour. However, before we start the actual episode, I just want to talk to you guys about something incredible that happened today. See this menu? It hasn't looked this clean in ages. Now, there's one weird thing I've noticed, which is you can't hold down the button anymore to scroll through all the buttons. I'm holding down the stick, and it's not scrolling through. You have to press it, which is a little weird, but it, they took away that ugly, ugly button, that horrible, horrible button that said, eh, you can download the new version of Minecraft. For it's gone. It's gone. In fact, Gartsky broke it. Wait, did they update the splashes to Bedrock Edition splashes? No, most of those are from Java. Okay, whatever. Anyways, we're going to go back to the actual video now, today, which is Total Tour. So, we are doing something very interesting. This is uh, the old tutorial world. Now, this is something I think we should get out of the way kind of early, because most of you have actually likely seen these. Now, this is the current tutorial world, so we're not going to spend very long here, but you know what it is. It's the tutorial. In fact, it's the version of the tutorial that I save so old that uh, apparently I forgot to turn on host options, and I don't really want to do the whole tutorial right here, so we'll just run through the start, show you how beautiful. This is probably my favorite tutorial, honestly, even more than the TU... I don't even know, what was the last one called? TU70? TU70 tutorial? I still like this one more. I feel like the Amplified World really, really upped the scope, and with the Aquatic Update, you know, they had all the oceans, which they look pretty good, but still also here's one thing about that button since i still want to talk about the button a little they forgot to remove it here it's still in the pause menu i can't believe they've done this guys but it's fine i mean as long as it's gone from the main menu that's my biggest annoyance you only see this screen for like 10 seconds it still works by the way but now this is this tutorial you've all seen this tutorial though so let's get to an older one Okay, everyone, here we are back in the TU31 tutorial. This is before Amplified, so everything is a lot less hilly, and I've actually remembered to turn on cheats this time. Now, the one thing we have to remember is to exit without saving, or this all will all be ruined. So, this tutorial is, uh, weird, because this is the one that includes every single biome on the map since it was the TU31, which was the biome update that added all the new biomes, the mesas, and the ice spikes and everything. And, as you can see, this is probably the one I spent the least time in, because I don't really know the world too well. There's this area, right? And I know that area, obviously. This is... I mean, I know the starting area. I don't know this town. It's a town, and it's like the extended town, because usually the way the tutorial goes, it's got the basic tutorial that you have to do. And also, whoa, there's a secret in this, a music disc. You found one or twelve music discs, guys. Still don't have that on Bedrock Edition. But now, here's something about this world that I want to tell. It's a little fun story. Remember when TU31 was first revealed and they were showing the screenshots? They took a screenshot that was almost from this exact location, and in from here you can see sandstone stairs. Now, when they shared the image, it looked like it was smooth sandstone stairs, and everyone went wild. They thought, oh my gosh, it's the first big console exclusive feature. Smooth sandstone stairs are going to be coming to console. It makes sense. They're adding red sandstone. Why not add smooth sandstone too? And it, the update came out. Nothing. They even deconfirmed it. It was a very disappointing moment in the community because we realized, you know, they really don't want console to be getting exclusive features, which it makes sense now, especially with the bedrock conversion. But now they actually do have smooth sandstone stairs. So it's not as, I mean, it's not this, like, cut sandstone stairs, which is what old smooth sandstone was, so what everyone was talking about would actually be smooth sandstone stairs. Anyways, this is getting too confusing. Let's put this map in my offhand, because it's a lot better to just have it there. Now, once again, I've, as I've said before, I did not have a huge attachment to this version of this map, because I didn't really play it super heavily. I remember the hedge maze, and I remember this. I spent a lot of time trying to do this section perfectly, and I could never do it perfectly, so I just ended up skipping it, because I cheated it. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's a, it's a cool parkour section. I just was never that great at it. And I think there's actually a secret little mossy sandstone village sort of structure in here somewhere. Unless that's on the newer tutorial. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that might be only the newer version of the tutorial then, because the I know there's a smooth, I mean a mossy cobblestone village 
Did I say sandstone the first time? I might have said sandstone. I know it's on the newer one, but it's obviously not in this one. Now, the other thing that this update added that was pretty big were ocean monuments. And as far as I remember, there was one over here. Here it is. I actually made a video here, the guide to make conquering an ocean monument. It's not a very good guide. It basically recommends that you go in super overprepared. I didn't do a minimalist guide. It was one of my more rushed videos, actually. But that was right here. There's so much history in these worlds, even if they're not... I mean, incredible. Let's set it back to day here. Here's the ice spikes, and I've always loved the ice spikes biome. This update that added them, I'm just so happy with it. And I like this whole area, too, because you can see the layered snow, which we thought they were going to generate with layered snow, but then they didn't. I don't know why. It's really disappointing. Oh, but here... This is probably my favorite... Okay, this is my second favorite thing right here, so let's show this first. This is a really, really, really big piston bridge. So big that it still lags our Xbox One X that I'm playing on. When I played this on the original, I think it was either... Yeah, Xbox One is what I played when it came out. That lagged the game so bad. It, like, straight up hung for a second when you activated that bridge. And there's not even much over here. There's this weird little structure. Now, here's the thing about this map. They try to recreate real-life structures. And this might be a real-life structure. I don't know. But it always confused me. Because it's just like, what is that? This structure is a little cooler, though. It's a nether portal. Yeah, you can see how the design for the tutorials gets more and more complex over time. This is probably the pinnacle of the simplicity design. But then it starts getting super complex from here in, like, the TU-46 and especially the newest one. It gets crazy. Now, what this is here, any old players, we're talking TU-12, will remember this. Uh, this is a recreation of the TU-12 tutorial, except instead of sandstone, they've replaced it with stone bricks. Now, I actually don't have the TU-12 or 14 tutorial, because the TU-14 tutorial was actually an updated version of the TU-12 one. That's the only time they've done that, and I think that was really cool. I wish they would have done that more. And basically, this whole village was made out of sandstone before. And then they updated it here, and basically, this, the whole point of this area is it's just a huge reference city. It just basically is a callback. Hey, remember this? Hey, remember this? And yes, Minecraft. Yes, I remember this. This is where they were showing off the new heads back in TU-12. It's crazy. Now, they're actually missing a few buildings that tips you off that this is the TU-12 and not TU-14. In TU-14, they added the anvil and villager trading, and they added buildings in this area. This area is completely empty in this version, though, because they don't have those. So it's the TU-12 version instead of the TU-14. They also had an ender chest guide right in these little side rooms here. They had ender chests placed down, and they blocked them off on this one, so obviously they don't want you to realize it's the TU-12. I have no idea why. Uh, but then here's a secret that is also in the TU-12 tutorial. There's a lever. I can't remember if it's in this diagonal building or the other one. And it opens a secret passage deep underground. It has to be this one, then. Yeah, here it is. So you open this lever, you go down, and there was actually a music disc here in the old version. You went up here through this kind of cave system, and it was right up here. Now, of course, in the TU, whatever this is, 31 tutorial, it's not there anymore because they moved it. But this whole area, I just love it because it's a huge love letter to the original tutorials. And they did the same thing in the TU-70 tutorial with the aquatic update. They put the TU-46 tutorial underwater under ice. It's really neat, and I love that they did that twice. I mean, it's the kind of thing that actually works because whenever they do it again, it's just cooler. Oh boy, that was a lot of talking. Look at this golf course. It's a nice design for a golf course. It's kind of inspiring. It's before they had concrete. Now here's another arch. I don't know if this is supposed to be the St. Louis arch. I don't think so. It's probably an arch in some other European country. But there's a lot of this world that just has unique architecture that you don't see anywhere else. Like, look at this. It's a huge, empty podzel yard. Do you, I mean, no, it's not podzel. It's grass block. <laughs> Oops, this is a mesa biome. I forgot that mesas have really dark grass. Uh, but this whole huge red sandstone structure, this looks awesome. I would love to build this in survival. The biggest issue would be getting red sand, which is not easy to get. Now, here's the weirdest thing about this world, in my opinion. They added terracotta back in TU-19. I mean, it was called hardened clay instead of terracotta, but I know they added it back in TU-19. They added mesas in TU-31 to take advantage of it, and they had updated desert temples all the way back in TU-19. However, this desert temple still has wool. 
This is another one of my favorite tidbits from this area, because it's an example of how 4J has probably artificially created this map. Because I don't think they found an actual map that had this terrain, so they built one themselves or created it with some sort of world painter script. And, yeah, the result was stuff like this, where they got an older feature, and they didn't... It's so weird. I don't... I have no idea why it's that way. But then I love this island over here. It's even got a nice little path that's super subtle. I don't even know where it is. It's so subtle. Uh, I think you climb up this, and then here it is. Yes, here's the path. It's just cobblestone through stone, so it's kind of hard to see. And you bring up here, and there's no purpose to this area, but it's like a nice detail. And stuff like that really makes me appreciate this tutorial map. It's the first time they really put in a bunch of extra work. I mean, the f the first first time was in the Team 19 tutorial, which is what we're going to look at next, because it's the oldest one I have saved. And it also has my favorite thing from any tutorial in it. But let's just quickly finish our rounds of this world. I don't think there's anything big here. Just more villages, basically. More towns. This cathedral. I jumped around. I actually climbed all the way up here in survival. I don't remember if I built up or what. There's even a jungle temple in this world all the way hidden in this corner. See, they really did want a world with every structure and every biome. And since they can't get that naturally, probably, they created their own world. And that's why we got weird stuff. Okay, here's where we'll end. I love how this world pool looks. It's just a unique looking structure. I mean, what is this? It's so weird. It's like the water doesn't even look like it's flowing correctly. That's how flowing water looks, not like that other thing. They probably did that because it would flow in like that. But it's another artificial creation thing, which it's cool to see that 4J actually does use creation tools for their worlds, and they don't just make it all by hand. Because, like, look at this river. <laughs> this is not a natural river, but it still looks cool, and it still is part of the world. So anyways, let's head back to TU19. I just think I should mention that this world is at the very bottom of my worlds list here, because it is literally the oldest world I have. I mean, it's not the oldest, oldest world, but it's the world that I haven't played in the longest time. So, let's check it. And basically, TU19 was probably my most hyped update. It's the first time I really got excited and started looking up stuff and wanted to find stuff. It's how I found IBX Toy Cat, because I was looking at Q&As of what he thought they would add. It's how I found a lot of YouTubers, in fact, for the first time, looking up news for this update. And when this update finally came out, man, it was something. They added horses and the wither and new redstone mechanics, and it was a great update. But now, this world seems kind of old and kind of boring. It's weird how stuff changes so fast. But, like, this village is tiny, but it seemed incredible compared to what we had before. And, once again, this is probably the closest thing we're going to get to the flat tutorial villages of how I remember them, where they were perfectly flat. This is basically that, but, you know, in its most advanced version, before they actually started building whole towns around them. So let's... Also, the interesting thing about this world, before I go on, is it has old terrain generation, before mesas, before ice spikes, before all that stuff, so all the mountains are, like, more mountainy, which I like. So, let's look at this castle. I spent a lot of time exploring this castle. I thought there might be a music disc, and I still, to this day, don't know if there's a music disc in it or not. I think there is. I, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure somewhere in here is a music disc. I might have found it at some point, but I might just be remembering completely wrong. I don't know if there's a music disc or not. The thing I like about this castle, though, is how interconnected it all is. There's a million floors, and each floor has its own unique rooms and layout, and it's... Oh! Told you! I told you! I told you there's a music disc! There you go, guys. Proved me right! Haha! -ha. Now look at this weird water generation here. I forgot how old oceans used to look, so they look like this. And then they got a mushroom island here. This is the weirdest looking mushroom island I have ever seen. Probably because I think... 4J might have used an artificial world again, which I don't know why they'd do that. Now here's something interesting. Waterfalls in Minecraft do not naturally generate, but here is a waterfall. So this is probably the hardest music disc to find, in my opinion, in this whole map. And look, it's the best disc. So it's the hardest one to find because you don't expect it to be right behind the starting area. And it's really hard to see through that waterfall, too. Even though there's the age-old idea that in video games you should always look behind waterfalls, you know, sometimes that just doesn't work. And especially, look at this waterfall. This is obviously not natural either, but it looks awesome. Actually, this waterfall looks better than the other one. Wow, I've never even noticed this before. But let's get to the real reason I like this world. It's at the very north... Also, wait, 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 wait. hold up a minute. 
What is... Oh, this is an old village well from when they could generate in the world, weirdly, without a village. Look, you can see one over there, too. Oh, I love that. I love that weird... That was, like, one of the few console exclusive features. But here we can see the reason I love this world. This... 4J Studios spent a long time recreating Stampy Longhead's house from his survival series in this world. Now, here's the thing. I have never been into Stampy's lovely world. Even when I was a lot younger, I didn't actively watch it. I watched his Rocket episode, but that was not even knowing it was part of a series. And other than that, I have not been an active watcher of his Lovely World series, but still, he was one of my favorite YouTubers because I loved his adventure maps and I loved his survival maps. And seeing that they would build this whole crazy thing as like a monument to him... It was so impressive, and it was so surprising, too, to see that 4J Studios was acknowledging all of these YouTubers, because they don't just acknowledge Stampy here, even though that is obviously the star of their show. He is obviously the star of their show. There's a love garden, in fact, just like in Stampy's world. It's a much smaller love garden, and in fact, it's called something different. It is called 4J Studios Love Garden, with a correct usage of the comma. Thank you, 4J Studios because this has a bunch of console YouTubers in it. Now, I don't actually know all of them. I know Echo Soldier. I know who Stamp... I mean, I'm gonna say who they are. I don't know any of them personally, I would say. I know Squid, Stampy, Echo, Big B Stats. I've heard of Dan. I think I've watched a few of his videos. Hat Films is the dude who makes all the videos and trailers for Minecraft. Nettie is Stampy's sister. And V Origins. <gasps> okay, guys, remember when a few days ago I was talking about the Tree of Life map? I don't even remember why. Oh, okay, it was in the Seasons in the City escape room. I talked about the Tree of Life map. I am 99% sure this is the guy who made them. V Origins. Oh my gosh, if I'm wrong, that's I'm going to sound so dumb, but I'm totally sure that's the guy who made it. And then look, they even leave a sign enough poppy for you to add yourself. So we're going to do that. Because I, I, come on, just give me this, guys. Just let me do this. So yes, guys, this is the old tutorial, TU19. The, pr probably the one of the biggest updates for Minecraft console ever. And, yeah. It had this. So let's just go through the rest of the world. Now, they didn't recreate his chests. I mean, it makes sense. They just put one of each item in the chests because that would take so much effort and so much time to recreate every single chest from a video. It, they wouldn't even stay up to date, so it wouldn't be worth it. But you can even go up to the music tower, which is, I think it's Fizzy Elephant's Tower now. I Remember, I don't watch it actively, but I do know a lot about it. <laughs> so, yeah, they got the waterfall. I love this. This is so cool. It was like, wow, they really acknowledge Minecraft YouTubers. And later, 4J went on to do a lot more stuff. Like, they did the 4J versus YouTubers videos. Those were fun. And they did, like, the charity stuff with them. Oh, it was it was really cool. I'm glad 4J has had a connection to the community. Even though they aren't Mojang, they aren't the original developers. But, you know, they're here. They still know the community. And they did something crazy like this, even back in TU19, back in, what, 2015? I don't know when TU19 came out. It came out before my channel existed, so probably 2014. And then there's also these uh, mushroom islands out here. These are really small, but they have this cool cave. And I remember this cave. I don't know why I remember this cave, but this always sticks out in my memory as one of the things I remember from this world. There's a huge cave, and it's just it's just there. It's just part of the world that you can explore. But you don't see stuff like that in Minecraft normally. And look at this. What even is this? Is this natural? Is this not natural? This is one of the weirdest things in this world, because it's ocean-colored grass, which makes, makes me think that they just built it there. But once again, I'll never truly understand 4J Studios. And let's end at this castle here. Guys, I liked this video today. Most of these total tour videos, if you can't tell, are pretty similar. They are me going in to a map from the past, from my past or from Minecraft's past, in the case of this video, and talking about it and gushing about it, basically. And I hope you're finding this entertaining, because I love it. I love to go back in these old maps and look at them and really remember them 
and think of them. And now that I'm making videos on them, I won't ever forget them again. Well, or at least the internet won't. Unless my channel gets deleted by YouTube, which could happen in a week. Thanks, YouTube. They're making it so that... I'm not going to complain about this now. Just look it up. Look up YouTube deleting unprofitable channels if you want to learn more about that. But anyways, guys, I'm not going to end this episode on a downer. This world's awesome. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.